Hi, I'm Adam Culp, and you're at BeachCast. Today, I'm going to show you how to share your local development environment on the internet using NGROC. So stick around, and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. If you want to grow as a developer and learn how to make better web applications, start now by subscribing to BeachCast and make sure you click the bell notification so that way you won't miss anything. And if you found this video helpful or if you have a question, please leave a comment down below. If you're like me, oftentimes when I'm developing, I'd really like to be able to share things with others. Maybe I'm working on a site and I want the customer to be able to see what I've been working on. Or maybe I want to make the make some sort of service that I'm doing. If I'm making if I'm making a script that is supposed to be used as a callback for some uh, service out on the internet, and I'd like to make it available to do some sort of testing. So I want that external service to then be able to call into the script that I'm creating as a callback and execute it. But I don't necessarily want to upload it to a server quite yet. I'm still testing it. And I'd really like to make it available on the internet. One way, of course, is by having a, a dedicated IP address. But these days, that costs money. Most service providers only give you a dedicated IP address if you pay extra money for it. It's just not worth that for me because I don't do it that often. It's nice to be able to do it when I want to do it, but it's not something that I really need to do all the time. So that's when I found this service called NGROC. Now, NGROC makes it really easy to share my local development environment on the internet or be able to share uh, scripts or maybe even share applications uh, over TCP using a tunnel. That way it's secure. So whether, whether NGROC shares it with HTTP or whether it shares it with TCP, um, it, it's secure because it's done through a tunnel. So that way um, it, it's safer for you to be able to share those items. And of course, there's a multitude of ports that you might want to share to, out to outside services to make them available. So NGROC is the service that I'm talking about. It's available on the internet at ngroc.com, N-G-R-O-K.com. And what it is, is that you, just, you download an executable, and once you have it downloaded, you uh, it's really easy to install. You can use it to share HTTP or TCP uh, through a tunnel, and also you can have random URLs, or it, it will use random URLs to be able to do that. So it is a free service. There are there are certain different levels of pricing and so forth. I don't want to make this too too commercially. Uh, I mean, mostly I just want to cover how it works and show you that. But for free, you can get basic uh, forwarding. You can get uh, you know using TCP or HTTP. Now, if you wanted to have a custom domain name, you could have that for an extra fee. Or if you wanted to do some sort of reserved domain names or use Google single sign-on, you can do that as well. Uh, for, for a little bit more of a fee, uh, along with white label domains and end-to-end -end TLS tunnels. But what I'm going to be highlighting here is just using the free service so that I can make a website available or make an application available to somebody on the internet so they can test it, view it, and see my progress so far. Uh, really, all that's required is you download uh, NGROC, and once you download it, you unzip it, to install it so basically whatever whatever system you're going to use it on you unzip it and then after you unzip it you pass in the command uh, that you can see here in step number three after the the command prompt you want to do dot slash ngrok which is saying in the current working directory execute ngrok and you're going to pass it the command auth token and then uh, tell it your auth token now you will get the auth token after you create an NGROC account. It's going to give you your token and that's what you put there. So once you've done that, then you can use NGROC. Uh, it, just, by, just by issuing the command dot slash NGROC, telling it in the current working directory, execute NGROC, and then you pass it other various commands in order to get it to work. Very simplistic. There's not a whole lot to it. Very easy to use. So if I issued the command NGROC and put in help, it gives me back the help uh, help documentation telling me how I would use the tool and, and the various commands that it supports. 
um, you can do you can pass it an HTTP, which then it knows it's going to be passing HTTP protocol using port 80 or other ports if you wanted to. If you wanted to make something available on port 8080 or 800, 8000, whatever you wanted to do, um, you can alternatively also activate other TCP communications in the various ports using just the TCP command and then the port number that you want to pass through. Uh, and of course, there are other commands here as well uh, that you can use along with the executable. Now, as a practical example, what I, let's say that I have a web application uh, fired up and working locally. Now, I, I do run a local web server, and that is always available on port 80. But let's say I wanted to create or have some other application that I was working on, and I wanted to make it available through an alternative port. An easy way to do that, now I'm going to give you an example, uh, actually using um, uh, PHP's built-in web server. So now if I go to to a location where I have a sample application and I'm going just to a projects directory and I'm going to be using a Zend Expressive and there's a, the, a GUI available in that directory. Now since using the PHP built-in web server which is very handy for things like this. It's not really meant for production of course but it is good for testing. So I can issue the command PHP uh, capital S or ca hyphen capital S and then give it just uh, an IP address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0.0.0 and then pass it to port 8000 and then I'm going to tell it to serve up the public directory in my current uh, location. Now, now by doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, by doing that it starts up PHP's built-in internal web server and it's running right now. It's waiting for commands to come in. If I were then to go to my browser and go to uh, the IP address and with port 8000, we see that the Zend Expressive site does come up. So it is serving right now under port 8000. Now, I want to make this port 8000 available. I have a customer somewhere else in the world and they want to be able to view this. I don't want to upload it to a web server, but I do want to make it available to them. So what I would do is in ngrok, right? I would go back to my command line, need to open up a new tab and uh, and in this directory, we can see that I do have the ngrok uh, executable there. It's ngrok in green letters because it's executable. So now if I issue the command ngrok, right? And I'm gonna tell it HTTP, and I'm going to tell it port 8000 because that's the port that I'm serving locally. I now want to make that available externally as well. So if I click enter, now ngrok has created this connection between my local web server and the internet. And it tells me right here, I have um, either an HTTP or an HTTPS URL that I could then uh, give to my client somewhere else in the world. Now, if I copy that link, and go over to my browser i could paste that in just as if a, just as the client would hit enter and then we see the website now this website is being accessed over the internet uh, there's a tunnel from my local system to ngrok and ngrok is serving this up using that url that it provided in the command line if we uh, click back over we can see that ngrok does show that there was a request it was a get request to slash and it came back as 200 OK. So NGROC is outputting that live as requests are coming in. Any requests coming in are, are, are also going to be shown here. If I wanted to know exactly what was going on, maybe I wanted more information. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is another web interface that's being presented here by NGROC. HTTP colon slash slash. Uh, the localhost IP address colon 4040, which is port 4040. If I copy that and go over to my browser, open up a new tab and paste that in, I, we see that there is, of course, an interface to ngrok, the local instance of ngrok, and we can see any requests that are being passed in. We're inspecting them as they're coming in. So right here, this is a request of 200 OK. We can see the, the Git request. We can see the headers of it. We can see the raw information uh, or in binary if we wanted to. Now down below, we can see that it was had the 200 OK returned, and we can see the contents of what was returned. We can look at the headers. We can again look at the raw information being sent back. 
So this is very usable if you wanted to see exactly what was coming in and out, um, you know, through this. Now, any additional requests, if I come, if I come back over here and, and refresh this, then we see the additional request come up in the NGROC inspection panel. And likewise, over in the CLI, we can also see another request came in as 200, okay. If we needed to set NGROC up so it actually, would, maybe it's an authenticated connection or something like that, we could very easily have set that up. Instead of just doing the NGROC HTTP 8000 like that, we could have passed in extra auth identification just like this. For instance, maybe we wanted to put it in user password. And, and then we would be able to pass that information in as well as, as we're executing NGROC. Now, alternatively, if we wanted to use NGROC for, uh, for something, maybe I wanna make SSH available. I have a small server here in my office and I wanted to make that available externally so somebody could use it over SSH. Then I could do something like TCP 22 and by kicking that up, NGROC would create a session it would be TCP based and it would be on port 22. If I had SSH set up on port 22, it would serve that up. And then externally I could access, you know, via the HTT or via, via TCP port 22 and be able to get, get to it that way. So that is using NGROC. It's very simple, very easy to use for serving up web applications remotely, especially if you needed a customer to test out something. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did find it helpful, leave a comment, let me know, and give me a, give me a thumbs up. Uh, click down below as well for liking the video. Tell your friends about BeachCast and come back and see us next time. Thank you.